Hey, what's happening, everyone? This is Ant from Ant Mountain Logistics. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll walk you guys through a break upgrade, which I just chose to do on my 40 foot gooseneck. I went from electric disc brakes, electric drum brakes over to electric over hydraulic disc. All right, the kit I chose was a Kodiak. And I've been here this out here for a while. I've been getting caught in the rain. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up today. As you can see, it's still raining. <laughs> but it's been pretty hot. So I haven't gotten a lot done. All right, I'm gonna go over some of the things you need to complete this conversion kit. Of course, the hardware that came with it. It came with all the brake lines, the fittings, all the nuts and bolts. Comes with a loaded caliper, brakes, caliper, the adapter, caliper bracket. Some of the tools that you're going to need, of course, hub oil, two and a half inch socket to remove the uh, vacuum cap or your regular cap. And that same socket also removes the inner two nuts. You're also going to need a chisel. Mine has 11 16 nuts on the back with a 5 8 nut on the front. You're going to need a ratchet. I'm using an adapter. You're going to need a quarter inch uh, torque correction, a quarter inch Allen socket, my lug nuts, inch and uh, 1 16. Got my breaker bar. You're going to need a torque wrench. To torque your cap if you have a plastic one is 30 foot pounds the Valcrum I torque mine at 33 because it says between 33 between 30 and 35 foot pounds pry bar mosquitoes you're gonna need a hammer I use my Milwaukee ratchet here to make things easier and my impacts you're gonna need a bar to lift your tire some knee pads if you're gonna be down on the ground uh, I'll show you guys a little bit later my backing plate when you take it off for the caliper bracket uh, the bolts that came on my my trailer fact from the factory they were not long enough so I had to go get some more grade 8 bolts you're gonna need a set of gloves uh, a couple pans to drain your hub oil in and also to wash your bearings if you choose to do so and a tarp if you want to want or need one to be on the ground. All right, the first thing I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna go ahead and take off the vacuum cap. I've already removed the wheels and the lug nuts. I use the pry bar to hold a drum so I can loosen this up, loosen the front cap. This is where your chisel come in handy. Bring your tails back. Yep. Right, pull the tab out. Check out my inner nut. Right, that's supposed to be tight. So that means my bearing been moving around a lot. My drum hasn't been really seated. And you can tell by the scorching on the nut. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the drum out some so some more oil can leak out. And I can get the bearing off. All right, what I did, I went ahead and took the drum I got it hooked up. I set it on top of the wheel so that I'll have a place to keep it off the ground, keep the hood. I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, shoes off here. Brake shoes are severely cracked. Worn down also. Of course, the front shoe is good. Number one problem 
these magnets. That one actually looks fairly decent. Right inside the drum, those eight bolts. I have to take those out. Then I separate the drum from the hood, and then I put the adapter and everything on, and we'll get all that set up to where we can go ahead and put it back on the axle. brakes off now I need to remove this so I can remove the backing plates because I'll get rid of both of these items because I don't need them for the drawing brakes on the front here is a 5 8 and on the back is 11 16 uh, I tried all type of offset ridges it, although it's a crazy area the best thing is just deal with it and make sure that I have the wrench solidly on the nut so I don't strip it out because I hit one set, one axle or one wheel that I had to take my grinder with a cutoff wheel and cut all the bolts off. I don't need those anymore. I can wipe it off. Make sure I got a pretty good surface. Minimum amount of dirt in between so I can, so I can get a good tight uh, fit. Grab the caliper bracket. Inside to the inside. You want to make sure you're not tearing up your threads or knocking dents into your axle. Be careful with that. 7/16 by uh, two inches, two and a half. Lock washer will be on the back side. Alright, I got some blue thread lock. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on the threads. Yes, I am using lock lock washers. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up this caliper bracket. Snug them all up first before I go to tighten them, tighten them down. Uh, next thing I need to do, I need to separate the hub and also put the mating surface together for the rotor which is the adapter to the hub. All right, I gotta reuse these same bolts because my other ones that came in the kit were too short. So what I'm gonna do, lay them up here, take some of that handy dandy thread lock, Get on the threads. If your old ones 
head thread lock on them and it didn't come off go ahead and get your wire whip throw on the drill but if you want to do it the old-fashioned way use a wire brush all right right now i'm gonna take the hammer and go ahead and separate the hub from the drum there it is not reusing the drum garbage what i'm gonna do is take and sit my hub back down on the rim make sure everything's clean is already clean just wipe the back side of my seal look at my bearing while i'm in here With me leaving that out here to get rusty, it's not gonna hurt or anything. We'll do the same thing, start them all. Tighten the sequence. Get them all started. Setting the torque wrench to 50 foot pounds. You want to make sure that you keep some pressure on it so it don't jump up out of there. Then you strip the threads. That which one I hit, hit and hit and hit. Alright, now I got all those down. Next step will be to put the hood back on the spindle. Go ahead and uh, put the bearing back in. Tighten everything back up. Um, make sure that your seal is seated in there. What you want to do is torque the internet down. All the way down until it stops. Spin it three times. Back it off. And do that three times. Make sure you're not messing up your threads when you go back on. Take a break, just wipe my threads off. Try and keep this as clean as possible. The, less, the least amount of contaminants you can allow to get in there, the better your bearings will be. And it increases the longevity. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take my caliper. All right, the caliper came loaded with pads. So loaded means that the pads are there. It doesn't necessarily mean that the pads are already in the caliper. You can use brake cleaner or anything that's going to uh, have a degreasing uh, like effect. I hear some starting fluid, so we use the starting fluid. All right, what I'm going to do is put the inside brake on. It simply just sits down on there and slides in. And this one right here, all it does is just come over the ledge the edge on both take the caliper make sure you don't get your hand caught up in there and that's all there is to it all right you got your caliper retaining brackets in your nuts the ridges should be up you want to check and make sure that is sitting flush like right in here it didn't drop down in there so i need to pick up my caliber drop it down in there and put my bracket on give me a little tap all 
All right, it drop down in there. All right, what I do is make sure the edge is lined up right here. They're flush. And I'll do that once the nut, once the bolt starts getting down toward the bottom. I have my fingers on the outside to make sure it stays level. And then once I get down to where I just use the ratchet as a uh, as a ratchet instead of using the electric portion. That way I get proper tightness. Mm -hmm. All right, if you look at this bearing, that's because oil hadn't been changed in a while and the bearing was getting pretty hot bouncing around because the inner nut was not tight enough and you can see that you see the, the burning right here on the inside that's from it not being tight at the factory You can also see where the bearing was moving around right here. All right, we use that same two and a half socket that I used to take it apart. So what I'm gonna do is use my pry bar, careful on the lug nuts, try and spin it over. You back it off a little bit. You retighten it. You spin it one time and retighten it. Right now, it's seating that seal, reseating the bearing back up and back in there on the spindle. As you can tell, hey, it still turns smoothly. You can see, I can tighten up some more after I did that. So that'll let you know, hey, everything's going ahead and seating on there. Nothing for me to turn it. Loosen it one more time and check it. Turn it smoothly. Now I'm going to tighten it up. Yep. 
Something you want to do is make sure you have one tab bent out, bent in for the inner nut. That way, if it does become loose, it doesn't just spin and kind of move back and forth. All right, you have this little tab right here has to go in the sliding axle. You want to make sure that when you put it on there, it's flat. Like I need to, I need to clock it a little bit more. before my tab will fit flat back there. So I'm fitting, fitting flat. Next thing to do is tighten the outer nut. All right, be careful on the threads. They will cut you. Now this one right here, you can bow up on it, put, put the strength into it. But the main thing is to ensure that you have it straight. My next step is to grab my chisel. Then you can pick, pick two opposing tabs. This is what I do right here. One tab here. So that locks you in case it does come loose, vibrate for some unearthly reason. Your outer nut is locked and your inner nut is locked. You got my new one. Roll it on. I'm going to take the same pry bar. I'm going to put it in here. Put it in here on the on the uh, lug nut so when I turn it, it'll create force. There's my 33. You probably have to fill it a few times. Of course, you're going to rotate it. And if you let it sit overnight, you'll come back and still need to add more oil because it'll be done leaked into the bearing. Before you go on a long trip, you want to at least drive no more than probably 10 miles check check it and add add oil as needed All right, I'm going to show you guys the uh, vacuum cap. All right, there's a magnet in here. All you got to do is take it out and clean it. If you had something in there, you could just clean it out like that. Just stuck the magnet back in there. Very important, you wanna ensure this hole is open or you're going to blow axle seals. So whether you have the plain rubber ones with the plastic cap, you need to always ensure that hole remains open. If it does not remain open, it's going to blow your wheel seal. You've been in a dusty environment, salt or something like that, you wanna pay uh, particular attention to it, especially around this time of the year, You can tell easy if it has an issue it'll start getting moist around there if you have too much oil you gotta allow it to vent because once it heats up the steam has to go somewhere so i'm gonna stick this back in here because i still have to plumb the brakes and also put on a uh, electric over hydraulic master cylinder but for now i'm gonna just go ahead and reinstall my wheels go around uh tighten all my lug nuts and that'll allow this oil time to drain and then I can hook it up to my trailer, pull it to a different spot, and get a box mounted on for the for the uh, 
for the master cylinder. Uh, we're going to show you guys uh, how we got the trailer secured in the back. This is my brother, A.B., Anthony Bradford. All right. So the reason you didn't see any jack stands because the back is blocked. So all four axles are off the ground. If you're not going to go this route, I use some jack stands. Those have already been completed. And up front, headed on blocks. Here's all my garbage that I took off. My old brake shoes, backing plates. That's the never adjust system. And my trailer is a top hat trailer with Dexter 12K axles. So there are kits out there that'll fit it. Uh, I chose to do all this myself so if I get to the point where I run out of time because I am still in the military I can just take it to a trailer shop and let them plumb it and I've done the bulk of the work watch out for your balcony cap so I'm going to lean in on the top All, all right what you want to happen is your valve stems you want them to be opposite each other this one's on the top this one need to be the at the bottom and you want the holes to line up that way you can reach inside and get to the inner tire to at least air it up uh, with these 17 fives without valve ex valve or extensions I have to utilize a short uh, chunk, air chuck, or what I do is take one of those little air lines that are made for uh, valve core extensions and put on it and fill it up and then remove it. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up pretty close to where they're really pretty close to each other when I start out. Top. All, that is. All right, so I want to check and make sure I got my holes behind it first. And they, they pretty much are. So that's all it is. All right, so what I want to do is I want the wheel to go on. So I know I have my, my wheels centered on the hood. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and shut it down right now. Cause the only thing I have left is just to retorque my lug nuts and then do the plumbing. And uh, you guys know how that works, uh, tighten the lug nuts. I'll do another video of me putting the brake lines on. Uh, when you're dealing with brake lines of any sort, be sure that you utilize the proper tool. Make sure you have line reaches. Especially when you're dealing with metal lines, because once you strip it, that's pretty much it. You need to go get another line or cut that one off and reflag. Alright? Well, just like always, this is Ant. The man by logistics. I got my brother behind the camera, AB, from Bradford Logistics. You guys know what to do. Like, subscribe. That's my brother AB right there. You got a nice load. You guys know how to get in touch with me. This AB right there in the single mat, single axle mat. 35. What's, what's that load? How much that weigh? Uh, that one right there is about 23. 23K? 20, yeah, light load. 
Got a 53 foot step dick. Texas Pride. Well, guys, we're going to go ahead and get up out of here. Till next time. Just like always, this is Ant, Ant Mile Logistics. I'm out.